Greetings to all the Shalom listeners. You're very, very welcome. This is Deacon T.D. O'Connor here today with you. And uh, I extend you my warm greetings. I come to you in the name of Jesus and uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Now, this is very precious. You see, there is a candle lighting beside me here, and it's symbolizing the light of Christ. Because without Christ, there is very little use in I speaking his word. But because I believe in his word, I speak it and I proclaim it. I was sick myself for a year and a half, still in recovery, but I was in life support for eight weeks. And without prayer, I would not have made my recovery. I also owe to the expertise of the doctors and the nurses, their dedication and their vocation to love, their vocation to patience. Patience is love. So I owe it to Jesus because he holds us all in the palm of his hand. He holds us all in the palm of his hand and our spirit comes true. So I'm very grateful today to be joining you in spirit, uh, being able to share these moments with you, these precious moments. Healing, spiritual healing is very profound. It brings us inner peace and inner harmony and it heals us emotionally, spiritually and physically as well, as I have discovered in my time recovering. It's the greatest source, I can tell you, I can share with you that it's the greatest source of recovery for me. Spiritual recovery comes first. Now, what does that mean? That means that I enter into a relationship, a deep relationship with Jesus and Mary. I had some very horrendous experiences when I was on life support, and that is what I did. I said, I'm resting with Jesus and Mary spiritually and I am going to be healed. They were the only words I could contemplate. I couldn't say those words because I was too weak to say the words. But I could contemplate them in my spirit and my spirit projected them onto my mind because the spirit, our spirit, our inner spirit, our spiritual dimension lies at the base of the pyramid of the person. And it's the main driver and the main support for us emotionally and physically, our physical body. We have something like uh, 60 trillion cells in our body and there is spirit in every cell. There's 50 billion of those renewed every 24 hours. So there is every possibility that we'll be healed. Now, always before healing, always before uh, an encounter or deepening that relationship with Jesus, we have what I call a penitential rite or a period or a moment of entering into a spirit of total freedom through forgiveness. In other words, letting go of any forgiveness that you might be carrying. I had an experience in Medjugorje, uh, one of the many experiences that I would have had in Medjugorje over the years. And one of them was, we were asked to do an exercise. I was doing a study at the time I was studying uh, the process of hagiotherapy, holy therapy, given by Father Tamislav uh, Ivankic in, in, in Medjugorje. And uh, he gave us an exercise uh, going away one evening. And the exercise was 
you enter into uh, a relationship with Jesus and you see that Jesus is bringing you a basket uh, at night. I did it when I was in bed, actually. And uh, anything that was ever troubling me or disturbing me from my first five years that I could remember and right through then in five-year blocks, I gave everything to Jesus into the basket. I could see Jesus in my spirit, that he was beside my bed, and I put everything into that basket. And I think it was about three o'clock in the morning, I felt this finger the back of my at the back at the back of my head, pushing it, in a sense waking me up. And it was Jesus. He said, you didn't give me everything last night into the basket. He said, you didn't give me your resentment. I said, Lord, I meant to put everything into that basket to clear myself of everything. But Lord, I said, you know more about me than I know about myself because I didn't know I was carrying resentment. This was back in 2000 and I think it was 2009. I didn't realize I was carrying resentment. So the Lord knows more about us than we know about ourselves. That's what that experience taught me. So of course, I gave him my resentment, but I also promised him, and I also promised myself that I would never again carry resentment. Never again carry resentment. Because resentment and unforgiveness puts up a blockage for Jesus when it comes to healing. So to receive all the healing that Jesus wishes to pour on us, all we need to do is take the blockages out of the way. But my friends, we are the only ones who can do that. This is the thing. We are the only ones. That door is locked from the inside. So we unlock all the doors that would create a blockage to the Spirit of God flowing right into our soul and healing us of everything. Deep healing begins with healing of the soul, healing of the mind, healing of the body. So we say to Jesus right now that I forgive everybody who has ever hurt me. And just if you can remember, or if there is somebody troubling you right now, go to them in your spirit and say, I forgive you. I ask you to forgive me. There is nothing between us but a notion of God's love. I am free from your heart and you are free from me. I gave that to somebody recently in the past couple of weeks and they came back to me and they said they were totally free. They were holding a lot of resentment. That, my friends, is the beginning of healing. And Jesus tells us in his own words in the Our Father, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. That's how it works, my friends. So now I'm going to have some music for you today. I play the, uh, well, I used, I play the accordion as well, but uh, with my with my sickness, I only just started back on the accordion. In the meantime, I picked up the uh, keyboard, so it's much handier for me. So I want you to sing with me now. Lay your hands gently upon us. see the Lord now, he's laying his hands upon you. Just bring him by your side, wherever you are. Maybe sitting in a chair. Maybe you're lying in bed. 
Let the Spirit of the Lord come upon you. Lay your hands gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands gently, lay your hands. You were sent to heal the broken hearted. You were sent to give sight to the blind you desire to heal all our illness lay your hands gently lay your hands lay your hands gently Render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands gently, lay your hands. to you through one and other. Lord, we come to you in all our need. Lord, we come to you seeking wholeness. Lay your hand Jesus, lay your hands, lay your hands gently upon us, let their touch render your peace, let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands, Jesus, lay your hands. Jesus, I ask you now to lay your hands upon whoever is listening to this video going out right now. Let us feel your presence, Jesus. Let everybody listening feel your divine presence in their heart, in their soul, in their mind, bringing them peace, bringing them inner harmony, bringing them fullness, bringing them a sense of being just carefree, where they can just rest and absorb your word. Lay your hands gently upon them. Let your touch Render your peace. Let it bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands, Jesus, 
Jesus, lay your hands. And just to bring yourself now, my dear people, into the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, the real presence of Jesus. There is a presence of Jesus that exists when we are together, when we gather together. He said, when two or three come together, I am with you, I am there with you. We know that Jesus inhabits his word in the scriptures, he lives in his word, his living word, and we know that he is living in his presence through the Blessed Sacrament. So we have all those presence of Jesus. What I'm going to proclaim for you now, my dear friends, is uh, just a couple of lines from last Sunday's Gospel, where we see the healing power of Jesus healing the blind healing the blind man. And as I said earlier, we have the candle lighting beside us here, symbolizing the light of Christ. And this was the uh, gospel acclamation on Sunday, the light of Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. And so the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Bless our listening, Lord. Bless our speech and bless our mind. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. He spat on the ground, made a paste with a spittle. But this spittle over the eyes of the blind man and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Silmon, a name that means sent. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came away with his sight restored. Isn't that beautiful. The last sentence. Jesus heard they had driven him away, and when he found him, he said to him, to the blind man, to the man who could see now, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, Tell me who he is, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe and I worship him. And I worship you. And this, my friends, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So that, that my friends, is the healing power of Jesus. And the best we can do, my friends, is to convey that to you, having listened to it, being proclaimed and given to us by Jesus as his living word. And then share that. Share 
share the good news of Jesus Christ. I have seen many miracles happening through his Lord, happening through the Eucharist, and that's why I'm here with you sharing this today because I believe, I truly believe in faith and having faith in the healing power of Jesus. Now, when I was sick and um, during my recovery as well, I think when you're very sick, at least that was my experience, you can be too weak to pray, just simply physically too weak. And when you get back your strength a little bit, you may be even so confused, you don't know what to pray for, because quite simply, you need so much. You know that it's bleak. You know that it's tough. You know that you're weak and that you're going to need divine help. The help of God to get you back. And I'm going to sing a hymn for you now that was very consoling for me in those circumstances when you're just too weak to know what to pray for. And the name of this hymn is My Jesus Knows. My Jesus Knows Just What I Need. I'm praying this for you now, my friends. Giving you these words in the hope that you will just surrender to Jesus, being fully aware and filled with faith that he knows exactly what you need. My Jesus knows just what I need. Oh, yes, he knows just what I need. He satisfies and every need supplies. Yes, he knows just what I need. My Jesus knows when I am lonely. He knows each pain. He sees each tear. He understands each lonely heart. He understands because he cares. When other friends seem to forsake me, when skies are dark and hope is gone, by faith I feel his heart around me and hear him say, you're not alone. My Jesus knows just what I need. Oh, 
yes, he knows just what I need. He understands and every need supplies. Yes, he knows just what I need. My friends, he knows just what I need. Just like I was saying to you earlier on about the resentment and the experience I had myself. So my friends, be blessed in the name of Jesus and Mary. Take the blessing of Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Holy Son with you. We thank all in Shalom TV for enabling us through the power of their technology to come to each other right across the world to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Until we meet again, rest in peace of Jesus and Mary. is perfect, reviving the soul. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. O my Jesus, hide me in the wound of thy sacred heart. Free me from my evil desire to be loved and esteemed.